So you've tried other VTTs, either because that's what your friends were using, it's the one you had heard about, or most likely because it was free. Totally understandable. What I'm here to tell you today is that there is a better way, or at least another way. It's called Foundry. And for my money, it's the best virtual tabletop on the market, full stop. No other VTT out there has the same mix of features, usability, pro-consumer practices, which is obviously huge, and the latter being probably what makes it, for me, the go-to VTT, and I put a whole lot of stock in that. But before we get into some of the other features, I do wanna mention here that Foundry VTT was originally started as a passion project by one person, uh, Andrew Clayton. It was his you know, frustration with the limitations of existing virtual tabletops, and as someone who lived through the early days of VTTs, I absolutely agree and felt this way. I mean, there was so much lacking in a lot of them, and you know some of the most popular uh, and early ones w did not change for like a decade, barely changed at all. Uh, stuff was in, in in beta testing or in testing or whatever for like years, it felt like. And I think that's actually accurate, at least over a year on some of those features. So Andrew was not happy with all that. And he took it on himself to spend time and energy to make Foundry. And then along the way somewhere, Foundry became a business. The core features though, and the, and the core, you know, the fact that you can purchase it and you can own it, you only have to pay for it once. These are core things with Foundry, all the updates, they're all free. And this is what makes me so excited about this project. Yes, other projects now have come along, other VTTs that people are passionate about or what have you, but uh, what Andrew and the, the team over at Foundry VTT are doing is amazing and, and I absolutely love it. And they're doing it for the reasons that us as gamers that align, okay? This is not someone who's just like, hey, how do I make a bunch of money? I'll make a virtual tabletop, okay? That's not what's going on. It's not a corporation that like, let me get them into my ecosystem and then I can really wring some money out of them. Again, it was made as a passion project for someone who cares about the VTT and, and the tabletop community at large. So, okay, <laughs> all that out of the way, you don't care. What are the cool features? Well, curb appeal. While it might not be the prettiest VTT on the market when you compare it to Alchemy, which is by far the best looking, it's still a far cry from something like Roll20 as far as curb appeal and still looks really nice. I will note here too that, you know, some of the competition while remaining Roll20, remaining basically unchanged for like over a decade, has started to improve some on what it looks like and some of its features. So some of this stuff has changed in recent history, uh, but again, Foundry's been doing it for a long time and they're continuing to iterate. So I think they're gonna stay ahead for, for the foreseeable future. The third thing here is that in an apples to apples comparison with other VTTs, including Alchemy, which I really like, including Roll20, which again, I like. A Foundry simply has more features and more customization and better general usability. Let me give you some examples. So first off here, it's easy to add your own visuals, music, and environmental tracks and switch between them on the fly. I did this for an Arthas campaign where I had the sound of, of wind over sand in the desert and it was absolutely amazing and it's very customizable. Uh, if you don't know, there are places like Studio Agate where you can go purchase music specifically made for TTRPGs for really cheap. There's plenty others, but that's just one I happen to know about and it's top quality product. And so you can uh, download all those or rather upload them onto your personal server or you can, if you want, you can like rent a server or what have you, or you can run it on your computer, but you have all that. It's, it's yours and you own it and you can do whatever you want with it. <laughs> and if you use some, you know, uh, free, software, some basic, you know, software, you can cut those tracks and do whatever you want with them. The next thing here is journals. They're organizable and shareable. This is huge. <laughs> and what I mean by that is you can put them in folders. Uh, you can have your own private journal as a character, a player, a GM, whatever. And you can also share it with the GM. GMs generally, I, I believe by default can see everything, uh, but you can share it with other players. And, you know, you, you can use this to keep notes of like and share with everybody what happened last week and what have you. Tables and decks. So this is something you can either upload you can purchase or you can even create your own where you can have a table to roll on or a deck of cards that gets uh, you know handed out to all the players and you can create your own this could be for random encounters could be for treasure what have you you can import all of the above from other games that you have on foundry again you own everything you control everything so you can do whatever you want with it it's really nice whenever you have a group of tokens if you want to spend the time to get organized I haven't honestly done that until very recently where you say okay here's all the NPCs 
NPC tavern people tokens. Here's all these that I've, you know, that I've, I've purchased and from various things along the way. And I own all these things now from various Patreons and what have you, maps and et cetera. And I can organize them and I can just quickly import them. So if I want to do a one-off, I can quickly grab all that stuff, import it, and then grab what I need. And again, you own and control all of it. Uh, the other thing is dynamic lighting. Uh, Foundry has really nice dynamic lighting. <laughs> this is one of those things where I feel like Roll20, it was in testing for like two, three years. It probably wasn't that long, but it felt like forever. A dynamic lighting in Foundry VTT is really nice. And uh, there's special effects such as rain. I think you can have uh, sleet and other stuff as well. You can also transition from day to night. It also lets you quickly draw and drop walls, doors, and windows. So if you do need to drop in a map, you can do it fairly quickly. With all of the things, drawing those walls and maps and doors on any kind of too complicated map is too much for me. One thing I really would like to see in Foundry is that that brush on, brush off fog of war, like what we have in Alchemy. I think it's a really nice feature and I'd love to see it as an option in Foundry. And honestly, if there's enough demand for it, it's something they'll add. And probably already you can, you can get it with add-ons. There's a lot of like a secondary market where people have made various add-ons that are generally free, some maybe uh, maybe charge, but you can add on a lot of features. I generally don't count those in my reviews because uh, eventually it gets to the problem where, you know, some company stops supporting them, some person stops supporting them and they're not as useful. And because of that, I'd really like to see this added as a core feature to the game. Post-production IRO here. I just want to make it crystal clear that I am both over and underselling these features. Foundry actually has many more features and they will allow you to have your characters have senses other than vision. You can also create localized areas of sound so that when you enter a room or get to too close to something, your characters will actually hear it. On the other hand, I'm also overselling it. And what I mean by that is that the features just for drawing walls, for example, they don't all work the same. The user interface on these things is really not where it should be in a lot of aspects, and I find it difficult and hard to use. And for the vast majority of people out there, if something is hard to use, we don't have time. And even though these features are, again, incredibly cool, they take a lot of time to learn and then set up. And maybe once you spend hours and hours learning everything, it doesn't take that long to actually implement it in the future, that's still a huge time investment and one that most people that I know playing TTRPGs simply don't have. And so for those reasons, I kind of simplified this a bit. And then in post-production, I was like, you know what? I need to add a little bit more clarity. I hope that helps. Other thing, drawing tools. So if you don't use a map at all, you just got a white uh, background, you can easily use the drawing tools to do kind of old school style drawing on your maps. Again, uh, you know, you might be like, oh, this is a pretty basic feature, but not every VTT has this kind of stuff. So it's, it has, again, a full plethora of features that core features that you really want in any VTT. Uh, it's easy to implement various systems and modules. So if you are going to play with any, you know, there's like 300 and something, I think that they have right now. Uh, but you know, <laughs> that, that should cover most of what you need and they're adding more continually. So you can just easily add those in. If you have, if you purchase a module, just like you can with roll 20 and other, other, uh, VTTs that you can immediately drop in there. It has every Everything, the tokens and everything already added in. There is also integrated voice and video. Uh, this is similar to all the other VTTs. Uh, I, you know, this must have been a, a very, you know, people must really want that in their VTT. I, I, our group always uses Discord for everything. So, but it's there if you want it to use for both audio and video. Uh, more, most importantly though, is that you own again and control all of these things that I just mentioned. No one can ever take them away from you. If you add the tokens there, if you add add music and what have you. It's yours. If you want to move it from one game to the other, you can do so. And it doesn't cost you anything. I believe for roll 20, you have to have like the, the premium version of that to be able to move things from one adventure to another, which I think, uh, at the, the low version costs $60 a year, which is more expensive than the one-time cost of foundry. So, uh, quite a bit, a difference in cost there. There's also the, the UX and UI. It is better than its competition. And this ranges from being like miles ahead to only being a few inches. So given the roll 20, there are some features that are very close to it, but in general, the user experience in foundry and is just objectively better than something like roll 20. What I mean by that is that there are less 
clicks that it takes to do something, the way things are formatted are better. And I've seen Roll20 has absolutely stolen some stuff, you know, stolen some ideas from Foundry. And I think that's great. I want competition in the market so that all these things will improve for all of us. But just uh, as some other for instances, when comparing random tables, it's easier to do in Foundry than it is in Roll20, which I think is the, ma the biggest major competitor. Uh, Alchemy doesn't have these kind of features as of yet. It also, again, it takes less clicks and the, and the UI is generally more intuitive. I will also note with all of the VTTs that I've tried, uh, which are quite a few, half a dozen at least, um, they all need improvement and work uh, as far as UI and UX. So I'm not saying it's perfect, but it is uh, right, right now, I think it's objectively better. There's also easily, you can easily drag and drop tables, decks, and, uh, and macros. So if you want to be able to roll multiple things at once, oftentimes, right, you're rolling your attack and your damage together. You can actually create a macro fairly easily and you can drop it into your, your quick uh, bar at the bottom to be able to hit with one button. If you're a GM, this can also be for a random encounter table or anything you're rolling quite often. There's many specialty things I can think of. If you have some particular type of counter or you're constantly rolling on a random encounter, the longer people are in a dungeon, you do this with Dragon Bane, for example, but whatever you need, you, you can make macros, you can make tables and whatever, and you can make them and put them in your quick bar down there and you've got quite a few options. And again, having said all that, again, I think there is room to improve for all the VTTs out on the market, but I think Foundry so far is leading the way. And again, I know I kind of mentioned this earlier, but in the world of needless subscription services where everybody's trying to charge you more money for less, <laughs> Foundry is a breath of fresh air. They are committed to continuing to improve the platform and offer free updates. They're on update version 13, I think at this point, and they just released that and they're still work they're working on the next one. Uh, something that, you know, the largest competitors in the market have only done really out of necessity, in my opinion. I mean, I think based on history, we can, we can argue pretty well that that's true. Uh, and it's less that it, it, at least it feels less that they care about making a great product because otherwise, why weren't they improving it to begin with? If they were, I mean, maybe you could argue they were, but it was at a snail's pace. So along those lines, Foundry has also recently started working with a third party, Metamorphic. And what they're working to create is the Foundry VTT store. So something like what Alchemy already has, like Roll20 already has. So in this aspect, they are a little bit behind, uh, behind the competition. But Metamorphic is a company specializing in VTT conversion. So this is huge for a lot of companies. And therefore, eventually it, it does, it makes its way to you in having accessibility and having good quality products. So their specialization is in conversion, adaption, and maintenance of VTTs or VTT products rather. Uh, this means that while some of the older products on Foundry have been converted to, to digital format individually by companies, in my experience, th their quality has varied and sometimes always isn't that great. I would reference Dragon Bane where you have to do a lot of fiddly things to get the uh, initiative system just to work correctly. You know, and it's important to realize with all this, while it might be Dragon Bane's fault, for not making their system work incredibly well in Foundry, uh, it is Foundry's problem because you and I really don't care whose fault it is, right? As an in end user, we just care that it's not working. And I think Foundry realizes this and they're working towards fixing that by working with Metamorphic, which I think is a great, you know, I think this is a great step in the right direction. So we kind of, you know, with this, we've, 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 we're starting to move into the drawbacks here. So Foundry isn't, you know, for everybody, uh, it is not plug and play. You will have to install the program. I personally run it on a server that I have here at the house because they have a lot of video and what have you. So I have my own personal server. Uh, you will have to figure out port forwarding, which is something that they have instructions for. There's a lot of, uh, and at Foundry themselves, also there's a lot you can find online. It's still an extra step and that's going to be a problem. In general, Foundry requires a bit more tech knowledge than other VTTs. I think this is mitigated a lot by the fact that, you know, VTTs are a group thing, right? You're probably playing with a lot of people in a group of five people, all of them nerds. Hopefully you have someone who's a little bit tech savvy and willing to help everybody out with, you know, getting Foundry and stuff set up. But I do recognize it's absolutely a problem. It is harder to use a little bit than these other VTTs. The second thing here is that it's not free and it costing anything when you can go use something like Alchemy or Roll20 that are free is a huge hurdle. I totally understand that it's 50 bucks. And if you don't know if it's good, 
are you going to spend that 50 bucks? I mean, probably not. Not when you have some pretty nice features that will do most of what you need in Roll20 or in Alchemy. Now you might find yourself one day down the line needing some of those premium features and having to then pay and pay a subscription. And so it doesn't work out for you long-term, but I totally understand in the short term why you might want to go with some other option. And if you have the money, you know, five, 10 bucks a month is not really a big deal to you, then maybe it doesn't matter. And so I, I totally understand. We, we want more products in the market for there to be competition so that all these guys can compete to earn our dollars. So if you just want to get started and you don't want to invest any money, going with something other than Foundry is probably going to make a lot of sense for you. If you have been using some other software, there's also going to be a learning curve. This is true with everything. I don't think it's a huge one. I think Foundry has greatly improved their UI and UX, their user experience uh, over the years. And so I think it's in a good spot. But when my, my wife first started moving over to Foundry, she did not like it. <laughs> and she was ready to bail on it because it does have a learning curve. And, and you know, I'm the, I'm the tech savvy person person or one of them in our particular group. And honestly, that's really it. That Those are the main drawbacks. I mean, it's it's not free. Uh, it does take a little bit more, you know, finagling. Some people will talk about all the great features that you could have with the various add-ons and what have you. Uh, for me, I really just want to review the core product because those add-ons are oftentimes supported by individuals who might stop supporting them at some time in the future. So while you can do a lot of stuff like that, the, that's it's there for the tech savvy among you. You probably already know about Foundry though. If you're a hardcore tech savvy person, you might still be watching this, but you're just trying to make sure that I give an accurate take, you know, and with that, again, as I mentioned before, we want competition in the market. So we, I, I, if you have another, you know, favorite VTT, keep using it. Absolutely. But for me and my money, Foundry VTT is it. And it, it is by far the best virtual tabletop for me and for my group. And hopefully with this review, you've got some ideas of why Foundry might or might not be good for you moving forward. I'll also note Foundry is doing some really cool things. They just finished the Kickstarter for Ember. You might be able to get in late on that. I'm not sure, uh, but this is gonna be an entire system and game world. They're working with the folks over at Mage Hand Press to make this. I haven't been able to, had a chance to look deeply into it, but I, I'm really excited about it. I think it's gonna be really great. I'm also really excited about them working with Metamorphic. I think that's really gonna help Help, and they will have a storefront soon coming to Foundry. And I think that's greatly going to increase the product of all of all of the various systems that you can purchase on Foundry in the near future. They're making a portal for that as well. Uh, so, so for creators and what have you, obviously that might not matter to you as a consumer, but I think that matters a lot to those people out there who are creating things for these various VTTs. Anyways, that's it for today. Appreciate everybody watching. We'll catch you in the next one.